I'm Lise Colucci, one of the life coaches at Queen Bean and the program. I have licensed marriage and family counselor and also narcissistic abuse survivor, Lola Blevins. We talk about mindfulness and how mindfulness applies to narcissistic abuse survivors and how it can be useful in helping you heal. Stay tuned to the end for a short meditation to help get you started with your mindfulness practice. That sounds good. Hit subscribe and let's go. I'm talking today with Lola Blevins, who is a, a licensed marriage and family therapist. Hi, Lola. Hi. Hi. Good to see you today. Good to see you too. Lola is also a survivor and has a lot of skills in teaching mindfulness. And so I wanted to talk to her today about what is mindfulness? How can it help you as a survivor? And how do you apply it? How do you do it? So let's start with the first one. Um, okay. So Lola, what, what is mindfulness yeah. for people who are um, basically in, in traumatic situations or with PTSD or coming out of a trauma or living in trauma? Mm -hmm. what, what, what is it as it applies to that? Mindfulness applies to the whole, you know, the whole sphere of that. Um, mindfulness is being able to be with the fears, being with the stress, being with whatever's coming up in the moment mm -hmm. for you, and just being able to sit there and um, allow it to be in the present moment, non-judgmentally. Or um, say they're trauma bonded and they're really. Yeah, um, they're really focused on the abuser and they can't make their mind stop. How would mindfulness come into play if they were to do a mindfulness meditation or or mm -hmm. how how does mindfulness apply to a situation like that? Mindfulness like I say it's it's kind of a it's a process of being present mm -hmm. in the moment, right here with whatever comes up and okay. learning through this to be non-judgmental toward it. That means not taking on the pain, the, the guilt, and the, the, the sense that it's your fault, all that stuff that we get mm -hmm. when we are trauma-bonded, correct? Right. Yeah. So, um, so with the practice of mindfulness, and I say practice, that means it's something that you integrate into your life. So that as you're, as you're becoming aware of the present moment and how, whatever emotion or feeling or idea um, is coming up, when you're with that, you're practicing to allow it to move through you and just kind of float away. So that sounds kind of floaty, but it's really um, a sense of being able to find your ground, find your rooting of who you are. So it's so broad. Um, and it's applied in so many different ways. So many, um, there's so many ways of getting into this. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's kind of hard to specify just for like trauma bonding because it's so powerful for that. So powerful. Um, so I think that hopefully as we're talking here, we can kind of touch on, on how that might work. Right. And how, how, how would it help someone who is, um, would help them? Let me hear you. Yeah, I hear you. How would it help? Right with practice with with and and i think that's through you know having a therapist having a, a good coach who really knows you know what they're doing um and and is grounded in mindfulness is a real help of course but what that will do in in time is to allow you to allow that 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 uh trauma bonding to pass through it's like you don't have to be stuck there so it sounds like what you're saying is it it can help with the cognitive dissonance aspect. Absolutely, that being stuck in these these cognitive uh, cognitive traps. I like okay. that. Yeah, yeah, thinking traps. Mm -hmm. it's our thinking, think, our thinking, thinking and and I I feel like with trauma bonding in particular, there is a the thinking that is hooked into the feeling. So we get a feeling of Absolutely. desperation or need or whatever the feeling is love whatever it is and we think and then those two things hook together so it can it can help to sort of um untie that a little uh-huh uh-huh okay. it's, it's it's allowing you to see that the, the connection between your thought and your feeling and mm -hmm. then 
using the breath because mindfulness is I use breath primarily as the focus as it, what I call an anchor mm -hmm. is this, you know you don't, you don't even have to analyze it whether it's reality or not it's like thought this is a thought let's still let it go and then you don't get hooked into it and with practice and with help with support from a coach from from a therapist from someone who's grounded in in mindfulness someone who's a you know a, a professional mindfulness instructor can help mm -hmm. to get you out of that mm -hmm. what are some of other uh, mindfulness techniques people use is it mostly meditation ah uh, yeah so I like to teach in my so let me kind of bring that into more you know my work right how you work with it yeah so I will when I have new clients very delicately very very um, kind of gently unless they're already grounded in mindfulness and introduce them to this technique of breath mm -hmm. the reason I use breath the primary reason is it's always with us it's non-judgmental it just does its thing <laughs> we breathe in we breathe out and I kind of let people know that's our gift our breath is our gift it came it came with us that was our first exposure to being outside the our mom's womb you can anchor to an image you can anchor to a vision you can anchor to uh, a memory of something that is just so dear to you you can remember you can anchor to the memory of the birth of your first child you can anchor to the memory of a day at the seashore that was just so engulfing for you that it just opened up your whole heart. Everyone has a different anchor, but anchoring to the breath, learning that, you can always go back to the breath. And I say that because meditation or mindfulness, they're, they're used synonymously and they mm -hmm. are a meditation, can be done in, uh, at any time. So, for example, just as a little test here, it's like, let's just, a little experiment. You and I will just sit for just a moment. We're going to just take a breath. You don't have to close your eyes. You take three breaths. And very in breath and out breath. Noticing what's going on as you're doing this. Noticing whatever. Not, no judgment. Doesn't matter what happens. Another one. A little more breath. Yeah, you can breathe out your nose, your mouth, yeah. You just notice. So, so I'll start to kind of give you a feel for what's happening here is that, so I feel a little bit of excitement inside my body, a little nervous energy. This is new to me. Yeah, yeah. Right. So I just went with that. I didn't try to push it away. I was just feeling that. Maybe there was a thought coming through my mind, and I can just let it go. So did anything happen for you there? Um, I would say I felt calmer or um, mm -hmm. not calmer like mm -hmm. in a huge way, but more like mm -hmm. present to other things besides so focused on what I'm doing here in the little yeah, camera. Absolutely. And, and then I think I had thoughts of all the other things I need to do today. You know, as I'm working on this, and I think those just kind of went away, and then go away. They just sort of exactly. were there without, exactly. without trying to do this video and also have those thoughts. Exactly. <laughs> right. They kind of floated through. They kind of floated it came, through. Yeah. It came on. So what you're explaining is what mindfulness is about. It is, it's about being present in this moment having an anchor, having something that you can focus on. There's a focus there and allowing any thoughts, emotions, feelings, um, sensations, whatever they are. There's all this stuff that's information that's coming into our bodies at all time. Right. Let it float away. I like to think of a cloud moving through the sky. And so when I see a thought come up, a, and I might say thinking. So I like the breath as an anchor in particular for people who are um, in a crisis state or in a state of mm -hmm. extreme trauma bonding or extreme um, hot loop, I call it, where they can't, they're ruminating thoughts and they can't get out of it. They're very stuck in 
the anxiety provoking thoughts and the upsetting thoughts and they, no matter what they do, they can't, because I feel like that is just something really natural in your body and it's there. Like you said, it's just present. Um, but it also lacks any trigger. It's just, I mean, maybe it can trigger you if you're anxious to breathe, if you're breathing too fast and then you've got to work to slow it down maybe, but it, it lacks the trigger. And that comes to my next question, which was, are there any risks for people doing this on their own at home and what should they pay attention to or um, steer away from if they're in a state that's pretty that's high triggering. anxiety that's yeah. triggering or if they're, if they know they're prone to triggers or they know that they're, they're not quite ready to jump into visualization maybe. I mean, what, what are some? Absolutely. That's a really good question. Really good. Uh, mindfulness can actually or this practice can actually um, lead to triggers. And mm -hmm. you can see that that could happen, right. especially if you're going into a sensation that is highly triggering, you know, that trauma that mm -hmm. came out of the, you know, the abuse or, you know, whatever's coming up. So what's happening, let me just go physiologically or neurologically, the, the body, um, when you're triggered, what is happening? To your body is really coming from the uh, the brain connecting to your nervous system and especially what's called the vagal mm -hmm. nervous system and um, you get into a state of sympathetic arousal so there's this sympathetic nervous system that gets triggered you think of it as you hear something you see something you think something or even your breath maybe your breath bring, breath can bring back painful memories <laughs> that panting yeah yeah so um that vagal system gets triggered bringing you into sympathetic arousal and then you go into what's called a um a hyper like hyper arousal and that hyperarousal is where we don't want to be because that is being really triggered. That's being like going into panic mm -hmm. to that really high anxiety. So, and that's a whole topic in its own. <laughs> okay. So <laughs> we won't go too deep, but what the goal is here with meditation is, and that's why in therapy that happens a lot where people will get triggered and it's being able to mindfully because it has to be mindful it has to be right there present moment whatever you want to call it it has to be present moment bringing yourself learning to bring yourself down or bringing the you know the therapist or our coach being able to bring that client down into a more the river of, of this flow of life rather than being all traumatized and you know pushed up like that back to that so this vagal nervous system um is um, also part of us that can take us back down. So, mm -hmm. you know, we go into like what's called vagal dump, which is our dorsal vagal. And then we have the, um, the vagal, this is part of the system that is ventral vagal. Don't worry about the words. It just is two ends of this ladder, if you want to think of it. And at that top end where this is, ventral vagal you want to be able to calm that down so what you're going to do is to not start your meditation practice with something triggering but one thing what happens when you're breathing the other other aspect i talked about that that sympathetic arousal when we breathe in that's a natural sympathetic arousal or our mm -hmm. system our heart rate goes up a little bit that's what happens the first thing in the morning big breath whoo okay, i'm awake and the down, the out breath is called parasympathetic. So you want to encourage, who's, should, to say the person who's meditating, to really concentrate on that out breath, especially when they're feeling agitated. So that will that will trigger in a really good way. Triggers can be good too, right? Right. <laughs> yeah, into that nice parasympathetic uh, response. So as you're breathing out. You'll notice, you know, as you really pay attention in the moment with these things, that the out breath will calm. The out breath will slow your heartbeat, will slow your breathing. Okay. Yeah. So two things. One is um, when, when you say notice, for someone who's not practiced meditation before, for myself, I know what, to, I know what notice means to me. 
yeah. but for someone who has not practiced before or not um, been exposed to mindfulness at all, mm -hmm. when I think of notice, I think of body sensation. I think of um, yes. not so much identifying with the body sensation, but actually just being aware of it. Being aware. That's Instead right. of my body's just floating through space, walking around doing its thing, bumping into walls. I'm actually yeah. paying attention to what. So if it's breath, then I might be feeling how the out breath feels warmer than the, you know, in my chest or like it has sensation in my body. And that's right. Okay. Okay. Is that, so is that one, are there other ways to be in the moment that you can think of other than the body? Absolutely. You can. <laughs> but, <laughs> What big B. I was in the moment there, wasn't I? <laughs> hey, um, you can be aware, of course, you've got in the moment with your breath. You can be aware of, um, I'm sorry, you were saying the body sensation, a body sensation. You can be aware of the sounds around you, mm -hmm. as we have in here. Mm -hmm. You can be aware of that bee that came by for the moment, okay, send him away. You can be aware, so that's a sound and a vision. You can be aware of the world, and I'll show, I'll talk about that a little bit more. Um, you can be aware of um, your, your, in, your internal as well as your external world. That another thing that is really important when you're feeling that overwhelm is to not float away. That's called disassociation, right? Mm -hmm. Right. We all dissociate. We want to be here. We want to be grounded. So the first thing you do, if that starts happening, first of all, you have to feel it in your body. It's not being afraid of that. Your body, your body's just telling you stuff. That's all. This is a natural physiological experience. And our thinking brain, you know, this, this neocortex we have says, yes, it's natural. I know it's scary, but it's natural. So you want to be with that feeling while you are coming down from that agitation so you start orienting and mm -hmm. orienting is kind of like orienting right you're out in the forest and you're looking for things but you're sitting here so i'm orienting right now i'm looking around i see trees they're green yellow purple naming things Let's see flowers bees house computer ipad orient, and that starts to bring your nervous system Oh, okay. I'm here. I'm grounded. So and that then, would be something if someone is triggered or if they are yeah. maybe, maybe before and after, if they're in a really heightened state of anxiety or trauma bonds where they, Absolutely. where they really have a hard time focusing and being present, that would be something you could do for a minute before and a minute after you try a breathing. Exercise. Yes. Okay. Yes. Yeah. It's taking whatever tools you can and, and, and you know, what works for one person might not work for another person. Right. So think of the anchor as like just visually see a little boat, you're floating around, you're, you're floating. It's like, you take that anchor and you throw it down and it goes all the way to the bottom. Oh, okay. Now I'm safe. It holds you in place in the holds, moment. Holds me in place for the moment. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and we have to remember, too, that the moment is always moving. We're not, the moment doesn't mean sticking here and staying put and being afraid of moving forward. You know, the moment is moving. We're moving with time in that, yeah. in that situation, right? Yeah. And moment not, to yeah. moment to moment, right. right? So being aware moment to moment to moment, yeah. yeah. Okay, so for someone that's, struggling to find time in their day, that's struggling to, uh, to focus, that some, somebody that really can't concentrate for more than a few minutes at a time right now because of whatever place they're in and whatever stage of healing they're in. Very normal. Is it okay to do two minutes, five minutes? I mean, of course it's okay, but is it beneficial and useful to Absolutely. do just short sessions for people? It is okay. But it'll just be what we, kind of what we did, Lise, earlier. You know, just that, just focus on your breath and then whatever comes up, what came up. And that's in the moment. So that's what people can learn to do. On their own. On their own. So, right. so they, they, they just take their breath. Feel their breath or their hands or whatever, you know, it's, it's whatever find, works, whatever. Yeah. Finding that anchor. And, and again, I do like to, most people eventually, everyone I know has been able to finally get to the breath and then actually do a lot more with it. Um, right. There's a whole world out there of, 
uh, oh, mindfulness breath mindfulness I, breath practices. I <laughs> know, and but it, but it, but it, if it turns you off, then you just exchange breath for something else. Right. Okay. I, I can see how that can change someone's focus from being completely narcissist related to being in their own life related and bringing the focus back to themselves and to the world around them, yeah. not, not to the world that was in their past or that maybe exactly. is in their present, but is they're trying to get away from, you know, yeah. not to, not to be totally stuck in the trauma. And so before we go to a meditation, um, mm -hmm. I had a question about, Again, about the trigger, if someone is triggered and if someone knows they have um, trigger easily or if they are <clears throat> get anxious when they're doing this, do you think it's a good idea? I mean, my thought came up of having things in place beforehand, knowing what it is, what writing down a few thoughts that are mm -hmm. um, go to thoughts that make you feel better. Um, maybe having um, some scent around that you can go to if you feel triggered to calm yourself down using your sense of smell. Um, knowing that you can go outside and take a breath and get away from the scene that you're in, like having things in place that personally help whoever you are right. uh, before you start something new like this um, right. so that you have somewhere to go to sort of nurture yourself if it does trigger and knowing that triggers can happen like you said and that it's okay it's part it can be part of the process mm -hmm. but that through practice this will help you calm yeah. um even even if it feels very stimulating it may not even be a trigger it may just feel stimulating and the stimulating um experience can feel a little like panic if you're not used to it absolutely Mm -hmm. Maybe they can focus back to remember that every time they exhale, it is a calming experience. Exactly. So that's, maybe a, that's a wonderful good. idea. First of all, Lise, I think that find that out breath. Find, you know, if they can do some of this practice, just simple, like what we did earlier, the three, four breaths, and really slow down that out breath, you can actually, you will at some point, feel that relaxation. Mm -hmm. You can feel it in your shoulders and everything. So if that becomes a resource for you, like I love how you said the, the oils, you know, the fragrances, the sounds, what, visual, whatever, whatever is resourcing for mm -hmm. you and brings you that helps you to calm, use it. Okay. Absolutely. It's wonderful. I love your idea. So having that um, if you know you're a triggered per a person that triggers easily, or if you're in a heightened trauma state, or you are unable to focus in your daily life at all right now, then maybe having setting a cup of time to get some stuff together, get some ideas together beforehand, and then yeah. coming back and trying this practice yeah. would be a. a <gasps> I have an idea. I, 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 love, <laughs> I, I kind of do expressive arts too. Create a little box, make a little box. Exactly. And decorate it. And inside, even words, put words on there. That's, yeah. Little, little notes and put some fragrances and put maybe a leaf or whatever it is that nurtures you. And I call that a, I call it a self-care toolkit. And yeah. I, I tell people all the time to create that exact thing. Just to, yeah. it's, a good, it's a good one. It works. And people really that. like it. People who that, that, um, people who respond to that really enjoy it. So Lola, let's go to a meditation that might help people. Could you guide us through one, please? Yes. Okay. That would be nice. Thank you. Okay. So uh, the first thing you want to do is just breathing in and out. Just natural breath. Yeah. You might want to close your eyes or soften your eyes. Just so that the outside world isn't impeding your, your uh, ability to go inside. So as you're feeling your breath, just notice the sensations of the breath, of the air. Notice the sensations on your nostrils as your air comes in. Maybe you're noticing your chest rising. Just notice where the breath is coming in, how your body's responding to that. And then on the out breath, this is your own, at your own pace, on the out breath, just kind of notice whatever comes up. Maybe your shoulders are relaxing. You might notice your belly moving in on the out breath. 
This is just an exploration of what this breath means to you personally in this moment. More breath. In breath. Out breath. So what we'd like to do today is to focus on what is coming into your senses and from the outside. Notice anything, be aware of whatever is coming in for you from your ears, through your ears. Maybe you have the sound of birds, sound of your computer working. Just notice. And when you're noticing, you just want to let that sound move through. So just notice, you can label it sound. Taking it all in. The next part we want to notice, just kind of going through all our senses here, this may be for, uh, this, uh, this sense of uh, smelling. So do you have something fragrant in your room? Just kind of notice that. Taking it in in your in-breath, <sighs> letting it out on your out-breath. Noticing the taste in your mouth. Maybe you just had breakfast, took a drink of water. Just kind of notice that. And noticing your body sitting on the chair if you're sitting, laying on the floor if you're laying, just kind of move around a little bit. Meditation isn't about sitting straight. Mindfulness isn't like having to be glued. You can move a little bit if you need to. Really feel like your buttocks on the chair. Noticing your feet on the ground, really grounded, kind of planted on the earth. Taking a breath, come back to the breath a little bit. Yeah. Now we'll take a little bit of internal exploration. Just kind of notice what comes up in your thoughts. Thoughts are coming through our brain all the time. Just notice them coming up and moving through like a cloud in the sky. You might label thought whenever a thought comes through. No judgment, no right or wrong, just a thought. These are natural. Okay. Breathing in. Breathing out, back to the breath. Now just notice any emotions that are coming up. Maybe you're feeling a little, a little excitement, a little bit of um, sense of butterflies in your belly, or maybe you're actually feeling some softening, warmth. Just kind of notice. Neither one is better than or good or bad, you're just feelings of your body that are coming out. Maybe you're hungry. You can feel a little gurgling in your stomach. Just kind of notice what your body's doing in the moment. Breathing in, breathing out. And then notice any feelings that are coming up. This kind of connects with our emotional state. But any feelings Sadness, happiness, sense of um, pain or a sense of pleasure. Yeah, notice these feelings. But we're just labeling them, sending them off. Good. Now just notice your breath again. Breathing in, breathing out. Rooted to the ground, coming back to that anchor, being rooted. And come into your sense of being aware of your own higher sense, your sense of compassion for yourself, compassion for the world. You might say these words, so they help to bring on a sense of clarity and, and connection to everything around you. May I be happy. 
May I be healthy. May I have a good life. May I find peace. You might want to say that one more time. May I be happy. May I be healthy. May I find happiness. Have a good life. May I find peace. One more breath. In and out as you slowly open your eyes, taking in the world around you, bringing yourself back to normal consciousness. Thank you, Lola. I really appreciate you coming on and talking to me today about this. I think this can help a lot of people. Yeah, well, thank you so much, Lise. I really enjoyed talking with you. Thank about you. this topic. It's really meaningful to me. To find out more about Lola Blevins, click her link below. My name is Lise Colucci, and I want to thank you for joining us today. For information about coaching or group coaching, you can also find links below. Don't forget to subscribe. Bye, Lola. Bye. See you later. <laughs> See you later.